All right, we're talking about autonomous cars, and Senator Brandis is going to explain what's going on real quick. So once the governor signs our transportation bill this year, Florida will have by far the most forward-thinking transportation policy as it relates to autonomous vehicles. Uh, so we, we're allow, we, we're, it's a great opportunity for Florida to show a lot of leadership. Uh, we're asking our MPOs and our cities to really consider the future of this technology as well. So we're, we're very excited about where we stand in front of So what's the practical concrete? Can I can I get an autonomous neighborhood vehicle that takes seniors back and forth so to the grocery pretty, pretty store? Soon. So today you can buy a Tesla, and a Tesla has an autonomous feature that will allow you to take your hands off the wheel, your feet off the pedals, and it'll drive the entire length of 75 as long as you refuel it uh, or to recharge it that it um, autonomously it has this kind of self-driving feature to it already so you're starting to see this technology creep into cars it'll creep into the high-end cars first but down the road uh, by 2030 it'll be a standard feature in many vehicles and let's look at the opposite end of the spectrum right. instead of high-end cars because i personally as a technology advocate i think there's some great strides to be made in essentially public transportation right, right. because you can have an autonomous vehicle you probably have much smaller vehicles right. and so instead of a city bus It'll you would right have a size. neighborhood vehicle right. and it can go, in fact, it could be many, many sizes of vehicles, That's one for each job task. That's exactly right. Um, so, and so what I'd think. like to see is some future for that. And being sort of a senior citizen state, even though we're not as much as we used to be, that's fantastic for seniors who can't drive anymore. They don't have to depend on relatives to go pick them up, take them to the grocery store. They don't have to call an expensive taxi. Right. They can get a car on demand. What's the future for that? So today you buy a car, tomorrow you buy a mile. That that that's the paradigm shift that we're going to see. People are going to when when you link an Uber type of product with an autonomous vehicle, so you have an on-demand autonomous vehicle that's picking you up, dropping you off, and it's doing it for 15 cents a mile. That's the game changer, and that's what's so exciting about where this is all going. Okay, and one other thing, uh, slightly related, as into the sharing economy. Uh -huh. All right, there was some uh, on Airbnb, and then there was a law in, so they allow people to rent a room, but some cities have regulations prohibiting that, right. and I think, uh, I think this, there's a statewide preemption, preemption in 2011, that's correct. right, so I looked up the city of St. Petersburg, they have sort of a vague rule, which now they can't change without running afoul of the preemption rule. What are your thoughts on that? Should the state legislature take a look at statewide on the sharing economy as it relates to maybe renting rooms or renting your car? I think that or being it, a it comes down to a fundamental question. Who owns your house? If you own your house, then you should be able to invite guests to your house. You should be able to rent your house out. And, and if you're not in a deed restricted community, you have absolute ownership of that property. Now, there are certain things you can't do. Obviously, you can't let the weeds grow to four feet high because that would violate city code. But whether you want to let somebody sleep in your back uh, bedroom uh, for a week or two and pay you for it, I don't think the state should be involved. It's an ownership issue to me, and you own the property, you should have the right to come with ownership. What if you run a restaurant out of your house and all That's your different. neighbors That's come That's different, over. though. Um, you know, today people can't run. Well, let's say if they're running a small business that serves cakes or cupcakes, they have a right to do some of that. And we allow that today in current law. We changed that law a few years ago to allow for certain baked goods to be done at home. So that's not right. a perfect example. But uh, but I'm saying a miniature restaurant right in your kitchen. Your neighbors the, come the, over. They're, they're, that's part of the sharing actually, economy. Where an, would you draw the line? There's an, actually an Airbnb type model that allows for people to have dinners together. I don't think there's a problem with I don't I don't think that's a problem with that. I think the concern people have is the scale. Right? Nobody's ever been said to me, I don't want my neighbor to rent this house out. He shouldn't be allowed to rent this house out. Right. It's when it's when uh, it's the scale and the ease of this. And that's something we just have to adjust to. I think that's what I would consider the, the limitation is the number of cars on the street, is there parking, you know. Right, just and, I, practical and I, issues. but I think that there that hasn't been the, the overriding issue right now. Mm -hmm. I think when people have ownership, ownership means something. It means the right to invite guests and to dismiss guests from your property. Um, and, it, and it comes with certain rights that we've grant, that, we, that we've allowed people to have, or not that we've allowed them to have, that come with, frankly, ownership. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited that, to, that, that we're having this discussion. I think the shared economy is the future. Um, we, should, we, we, should, we should be able to squeeze more value out of ownership. And that's what we're excited. It's exciting to see people doing that. So last follow-up, a little tricky is, so then who gets to decide the new rules on the sharing economy, the individual cities, like 400 of them in, in Florida, or the state? Well, I think as it relates to Uber and Lyft and taxi cabs, I think at the end of the day, the state's gonna have to have some 
blanket conversation. Um, I'm hoping that that, that conversation um, includes insurance, background checks, vehicle inspections, fee to cities, all of those things can and will be covered in future legislation. All right. Well, thank you very much, right, Senator Brandis. Appreciate it.